Hello and thanks for stopping by. This is Oink for the Atari 2600, released by Activision in 1983. Now that's Oink with an exclamation point. There's emphasis on that word, I guess. It's another Activision game to add to the collection, and it's roughly based around the three little pigs. Here, you play a pig that's trying to prevent the wolf from breaking in to get you. Basically, the wolf is outside, he's breaking into your house, and you are repairing the house from the inside. As the wolf destroys bits of the wall, he will eventually get a hole created. And if he gets a hole created, he can drag you down to that hole. If the opening is big enough, he will drag you outside, and you will lose a life. While the wolf is creating the hole, you're just grabbing these bricks, and there's a row of these little bricky things at the top of the screen. You move to the location, and you press the button to pick up the brick, and then you move around, and you press the button again to drop that patch in place. You'll get points for every one you drop. The wolf is going to continue to move back and forth, and he'll destroy little bits of the house, and he's faster than you are. So you really need to work at grabbing bricks from the right location, and then dropping them into the most useful spot down below. It's a constant back and forth, grab and drop. There are three pigs in this game, and every time you lose a life, you move on to the next pig's house. It'll be a different color, and I guess that's good for game variety, I suppose. Although, the gameplay doesn't shift at all, it's just rinse and repeat. The wolf is supposedly blowing pieces of the house down, like in the Little Pig fairy tale, of course. But the way his breath is represented on screen, to me it looks more like a tongue. Or maybe a laser blast from his mouth, I don't know. Actually, the wolf, to me, kinda looks like an anteater, to begin with. So, take it for what it's worth. When there's an opening and the wolf can blow inside, his breath, or tongue, or the laser blast coming out of his mouth, whatever it is, it, if it hits you, it will drag you down to that opening, and... Like I said, if the opening's big enough, he's going to pull you outside. It's frustrating when he grabs you and he pulls you down because usually you're trying to get really busy dropping bricks in place, but that's just how the game is played. This is just a high score type of game, and you just keep going until you lose or get bored with it, I suppose. There's really no music, and the sound effects are pretty Atari 2600 basic beeps and boops. There's really not much to the sound here. A little music would have helped this one along. I know just about all Atari games that you're you're playing, you're really just shooting for a high score of some type, but this one kind of operates in a different way compared to most other games. You're not really playing to beat a level. There are no levels to beat here. You're just playing, I guess on a particular level, that'd be a house. You're playing on that zone as long as you can. Eventually the wolf is going to get inside and you're going to lose a life. You never fully run out of bricks either, but you can also never fully patch up what the wolf's doing. His level of destruction is just going to get bigger and bigger, so Eventually, even you, with unlimited bricks, dropping them into place, eventually you're going to lose to the wolf. There's just no level to win, there's no end to the wolf, it's just you trying to stay, as, stay alive as long as humanly possible in any given house. It feels kind of like you're building a sandcastle on the beach as the tide's coming in. Eventually the water's going to take over, it's just a matter of time. Now, the question becomes, knowing that you can't ever stop the wolf or beat a level, the question is... Is this fun? And I think the answer to the question is, I don't know if it's fun. I know this was early console and video game days, and back then developers would basically try everything and anything to make a game. Nothing had really been tried before, so I don't think anybody knew what was going to work or what was going to fail. So we end up with games like this. They're just different. Not good, not bad necessarily, just different from other games. I've mentioned this before about the Atari 2600. Most of these games, I don't think they were really designed for long-term play. And playing this game, this system, usually meant playing any given game for a few minutes. And then you swap it out for another one. I know when I was a kid, most of my friends had Ataris as well, and they all had, they all had their own individual pile of games, and they swapped them around when they played. So, when you went down to the living room and you played Atari, to me it seemed that that meant you were just going to play a bunch of different games. I feel a game like this, it's good for a few minutes, before eventually you get to the end of your rope, I guess, you get bored, and then you find a way to move on to something else. Not good, not bad, just different, a little weird, your character's pretty big on screen, and it would be nice if there was music here, like I said. Well, that's all I have for Oink for the Atari 2600, it's kind of a weird one to me. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.